Component 1, class question book, question 6. A group of scientists studied the sand dune system at a place in Wales. They cleared a section of land and then studied it. They randomly selected 20, 20 one meter squared areas and identified the different species present. Okay. Describe how the sites are selected at random. Right, well, you would get a, you've done this in the field, so you get a tape measure and it's a 10, 10 meters tape measure. Then tape measure that way, 10 meters again. And then you get a random number generator, a random table of numbers. And that will give you random places to, to sample on there. So you just keep going until you've got 20. So how are the sites selected at random? So you lay out this grid uh, with two tapes. So lay out a grid you'd use to tape measures. And we need to talk about the randomness. We need a random number table or a random number generator. So use a random number table or generator and that will give you your coordinates well we've got three marks so we've and the last one will be explained why so we've got our first describing how for two marks and then we've got a why question. So why would we do it at random? Because even scientists would, would be biased, they'd pick the most interesting area to put their quadrats on or if they found a new plant they definitely want that to be included. So they'd be biased, so this random generation numbers avoids bias. So with this avoids bias. I could say you know gives a better representation. And then we've got the data table of the mean and number of species. Lots of things you might not have heard of there. In the first year the scientists only found four they found a lot more after uh, five years. Identify the type of succession. Well, you've got the type of succession that goes from bare rock to the climax community. That's a primary succession. Here they haven't done that. They've, what have they done? They've cleared an area. So it's not a primary succession, it's a secondary succession. We should probably give the same climax community, but you start it from a different, different position. And then we just need to you know, say what, what's happened. So why is it secondary succession? Um, it has been cleared um, had previously being colonized. So it had stuff on it at the start. So you'd probably, you know, things like, you know, seeds and nutrients, things like that, they'd already be there. So soil would already be there. So example, soil already there. And why this is probably the, the hardest the hardest point there is why this plant number of species increased well we've changed the starting position 
So we've changed that environment which allows the you know, other new species to grow. So the environment has been changed. which allows other species to what was there when they cleared it to grow. So just what would happen to the number of animal species in the area? So you probably guess correctly here if you need to that this would increase, so yes they are going to increase. And why? because we're going to have, as succession goes on, we usually get more sort of biomass, more different types of plants there with different types of food and things like that. To put that in the right, the right terminology, we could say you know, more um, habitats, more different types of habitats, more food sources, or niches, sort of the environment and the, the more ways to ways to live. So pretty straightforward there. Then we get um, reference to legumes. We've never heard of those before but they're saying they are legumes. So therefore have root nodules that contain Rhizobium. So you know that anyway. From if you, as soon as you say, let see legumes. Now, why are they able to survive in soils with low nitrogen conditions? Well, these can get their nitrogen from from the the air where there's nitrogen gas. So, can carry out nitrogen. fixation and yeah we an explanation of that so we've got three marks there so we need to flesh out this answer so nitrogen gas you now which is N2 converted to for example ammonium ions or converted to ammonium ions NH4 plus right, converted to ammonia which will then immediately dissolve and that's two marks but we haven't actually answered the question yet really which is why they're able to survive these plants what they're going to do with this well um, this ammonium gets used why? Oh. What for? Yeah. To make anything containing nitrogen. So makes the most obvious one might be amino acids. We could say proteins, but also anything else containing nitrogen. You know, things like you know nucleic acids like DNA. Part two details about rhizobium and we've got this uh, enzyme nitrogenase if you didn't know the previous answer that kind of gives you the answer here and the enzyme is inhibited if oxygen levels are high so we've got this other form of hemoglobin called leg hemoglobin which has a very high affinity for oxygen why is a leg hemoglobin there common common question if you've done lots of past questions so leg human going let's let's say what it what it does then we've got four lines for three marks here so you need to be careful we don't waffle so leg hemoglobin you know combines with the oxygen present combines or binds A 
and then why you know what what does that then enable so we've got three marks here so that then gives anaerobic conditions so this gives an aerobic conditions in the nodule And why is this needed? Because rhizomian only fixes nitrogen in anaerobic conditions. I know it appears to be repeating the, the question a bit, but we need to find three things to say here. So, rhizobium only fixes nitrogen in anaerobic or oxygen free. conditions. Part C. Close to Nguyangla, that place in Wales, is the peat bog of Carl's Fucknall. Fucknall. Uh, this is an area of poor, poor drainage where soil is water. There we go. It's something we do recognise. We might not recognise the Welsh names, but we recognise it talking about waterlogging. And it's mentioning Climax Community and it's telling us what's there. So normally we would expect trees to be the climax in this country, uh, but it's telling us this little little plant, which is moss. It's just a little, you know, little plant that lives, you know, hardly any, hardly any roots, Le needs to be in damp conditions. So explain why the bog is described as the climax community. So this is just AO1, just really a, de a definition for climax community. So it's the stable community, the last community, no further succession. So it's the final stable community. So it's reached equilibrium, no further succession, no further succession. Explain why the trees are unable to survive in waterlogged soils. Uh, two marks. Well we need to say what waterlogged, the least we can say here is tell us about what we know about waterlogged soils. So waterlogged soils you know, are usually anaerobic, they lack oxygen, so waterlogged Soils are anaerobic. Then we we need to think of well, okay. If something's anaerobic, what can't happen, or what's what's the problem with that? You know, what needs oxygen? These trees, what what do they need oxygen for? Possibly under under water. And you can imagine, well, they need oxygen for aerobic respiration. So they, they can't do aerobic respiration, so they might not be able to do, you know, about roots. Think about the core, what do what do roots do in plant transport? You've got active transport of ions in the roots, possibly. And nitrogen fixation might, you know, that, that requires energy. So let's just go for something simple, like uh, the roots of trees cannot respire aerobically. So that's enough, uh, but we could, you know, could say, you know, e.g. then no active transport. That's, that's where we are heading to. Or we could, we could say a completely different point that you might know from your nitrogen cycle. You might say, well, we'll get, uh, get denitrification if you've learned your, it's usually the last thing that you learn on the nitrogen cycle. So denitrification. So there'll be lack of nitrate you know, for, the, for the roots.
or lack of the nitrate ions that roots take up. So lack of nitrate. And we're getting to the end of this uh, very long question. Now we've got a photograph that shows a plant and a bog called a sundew. This is an insectivorous plant. Uh, captures insects and digests them. And there's there's a, an insect there. Okay. And then you might think a normal organism that catches another organism will will eat it to get energy. But we know that plants actually use sunlight and photosynthesis and, and make, make their own sugars. They don't digest things for sugars, usually. And then we've got an equation for nitrogen fixation. Okay. So nitrogen plus hydrogen split up there into its proton and electron gives ammonia plus some hydrogen and yeah, this is using energy in the form of ATP. Now, okay. Suggest why insectivorous plants such as sundew rely on catching prey. So it's not about getting energy from the insects. That's a common, common wrong answer. It's got to be something to do with nitrates. Uh, got to be something to do with nitrates. So these plants can't do nitrogen fixation. Or if they possibly if they did, they didn't might not have enough energy. So this is a way of getting nitrates. So digesting insects is a, it's a good way of getting nitrates. We've got three things we need to say here. So we are in the bog. We're in this bog. So we we still got the boggy problems of anaerobic conditions and so the amount of denitrification. So nitrate is low. And low supply. So the plant needs nitrate. And possibly you could say, well, it would take a lot of a lot of energy to make make your nitrates or this this plant might not make make its own nitrates or make its own ammonium to turn into nitrates. So we can say it's a good way of getting nitrogen. So let's just explain the problem. This is a difficult point to, to make. So, so you might not get this one, but you might get the two after it. It takes a lot of ATP to fix nitrogen. So why are we saying that? Well, we're saying that because it's giving us this. Yeah, they don't waste ink in exam papers. They're giving us this for a reason and they're giving us this so that we look at, well, we're making ammonium, look, we're using energy. They want you to talk about energy. So we're not just plucking energy out of the air. It's giving it us in the question. So you've got to, you've got to try and use that information somehow. So it's taken a lot of energy to do this fixation, which this plant might not be able to do. It's more energy efficient to digest insects. So more energy efficient to digest those insects and those can be then this is a, a point that hopefully you'll get so that use those as a, a nitrogen source to make amino acids and proteins and so on so can then use this as a nitrogen source to make e.g. amino acids. So a bit of work required. So moral of that story is try and use what they're giving you in the information. That's AO3 stuff, you know, suggesting uh, quite difficult. 20 marks.